Today is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, which is a day for everyone across the country to reflect on the legacy of residential schools. At just six years of age, Phyllis Webstad got her orange shirt taken away from her. And today, we wear orange to honor all Indigenous survivors in solidarity with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities. We also want to welcome back to the panel scholar and writer, Riley Yesno. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me again. We love this. Well, we're going to dive into our first topic, and it is a really interesting one. Yeah. In an opinion piece from TVO Today, one Indigenous person says that they often struggle with knowing how to refer to members of the dominant culture in their writing. Mm -hmm. So since to them, the options available kind of seem inadequate. They say that the most often used words these days are settler, colonizer, mm. Caucasian, but they also find various issues with all of those descriptors. So should the terms like settler, like colonizer, be more normalized in mainstream discourse? Hmm. This is a big question, <laughs> right? That's a big one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're asking me, I think the basic answer is yes, but it is more complicated yeah. than just that. Like, mm. I mean, indigenous already, we have to understand, is like an umbrella term, right? right. It mm -hmm. like homogenizes hundreds and hundreds of groups of people into mm. this one identity category. And so when I'm writing, if I'm talking about not that, mm. I'll say not indigenous. Um, writ large. And I say that because settler, while I don't think an inappropriate term by any means, mm -hmm indicates somebody or a descendant of somebody who has a very specific relationship to colonization, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're a settler, you are somebody who either came or benefits from the coming to this land mm -hmm. and had your ways of life imposed on the ways of life that were already here. Mm -hmm. But that's not everybody. Like right. black yeah. folks, brown folks, refugees, immigrants, like many of them don't come here and benefit from colonization and the dominant ways of life mm -hmm. in the way a specific group of people do. Mm -hmm. um, and so just as I think we should be attentive to the million different differences within the Indigenous umbrella, mm -hmm. I think that it's important that we are b doing the same with the non-Indigenous side of things, right? So some of pe some people are settlers, and it's okay to say that. Some people are Black, and we should say that as well. We should be specific about what sort of relationship to colonization we're calling people to, I think. Mm -hmm. That's really That's well said. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really well said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I must admit, because it is such a heavy topic, this writer, I love that they brought a little bit of humor to the piece. I like tackling or being made to feel comfortable with a little bit of humor. And he suggested dispersed Europeans to call people <laughs> who look like me, which is what I do with you. Yeah. This is how I explain, you know, white people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is why you just make people to But me. I also like this one, pigment denied. <laughs> <laughs> Pigment. Some pigment, but I'm denied a lot. You grow in comparison. I'm denied a lot. Yes, you Melanin are. Melanin deficient. Your, your, yes. Your ex explanation was so wonderful, but I need to unpack a little more why mm. um, those terms, settler and colonizer, mm. sort of irk me. And I think mm. it is because, or makes me feel uncomfortable. I want to be uncomfortable, but the only people who ever use it seem to be people who look like me. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It's kind of the way that Karen mm. has been co-opted from yeah. its original mm. meaning, and now <laughs> it's usually white men using it against white women, which is strange. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I wonder if it's done in the tone, mm. if it is, because I feel like if you did it to me, I'd be fine with yeah, that. I'd be too. like, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and yet if someone else, if, depending on their intent, I, I, like, I think what people who look like me need to start to get comfortable with also is just mm. whiteness in general and being mm. told that. And I've seen so many times when that's called out in group chats, on social media, whatever, white people seem to have an a discomfort mm -hmm. that makes them angry when mm. they are called out. And mm. I think that anyone watching, if you felt uncomfortable about being called out by your whiteness, it's something for you to check in yourself. Totally, because yeah. people who have color are constantly being called out for that color. So I think that we first need to get comfortable with sitting with yeah. good white that's, yeah. and sit with that discomfort yeah that's, 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 that's such a solid mm -hmm. point you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of a conversation i just had recently about the the difference between the word expat and immigrant mm -hmm. oh right oh. an expat is a person living outside of their native land and an immigrant is a person living permanently in a foreign country but if you think about it it's the same thing <laughs> you're not from this place and now you're living in another place but let's be real when we talk expats we always think of them as british white mm -hmm. people who've gone somewhere to mm -hmm. take advantage of a situation or an opportunity 
opportunity or maybe for love, but when a person is brown or they're from a poor country, they're an immigrant, they're undocumented, yeah, they're illegal, right? right? Mm. So it reminds me of that same conversation that, you know, strikes, and again, it makes people very uncomfortable. And yeah. I think that's what we have to work on. Stop being so defensive. defensive. Mm -hmm. yes. And just listen and have the conversation. No one's trying to point the finger and say, this is what your ancestors did. It's like, <laughs> this is just the reality of the life and how you got here and how I got here and how my parents and grandparents and your parents got here. Let's just have a real conversation. Yeah, it is. Totally. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, you, come a bit closer. We've got so many more must-see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below and don't miss out.